down Arrow to actually get into the finals, I think, right? Um, they beat out Arrow in the quarterfinals, and then they beat Alipets in the semifinals. <coughs> so yeah, they did knock Arrow out of this tournament, so... Obviously, they've been practicing a lot. I'm quite keen to see what they're going to be bringing to the table this game. Yeah, it's... They're definitely a team to look forward to, and of course, just the Koreans, you know, overall, it's developing pretty damn fast, but... They do start out quite standard, picking up the Shadow Demon, and well... I can expect a Mirana maybe from them as well now. Well, maybe. They're banning out a lot of heavy push heroes with the Shadow Shaman and the Enchantress gone already, so... I think Brewmaster quite good pick up. A lot of early game and Titan, well the way Titan normally play is they play for the early game so they get heroes that fight early, push down towers quite easily and normally their aim is kind of win by the 20 to 25 minute mark just based on gold experience and kills. And interesting, neither team has taken Invoker. Invoker wasn't banned out but not even worthy of a first pick, second pick, third pick. Do Titan want to take him now? KYXY does play a pretty mean invoker and Ohio on the Batrider's got some nice crowd control there just being able to take out a hero so what do you reckon? Pick up the invoker or is he is he poison for some reason? Actually I don't think Titan have played the invoker that much recently because maybe it's just not as aggressive as they would like with the cold snap nerf and well, the X-Rock getting slightly nerfed as well with the Forge Spirits, but I still think it's a really strong pickup. Would be pretty decent against the Brewmaster, maybe with the Vex even, just get that EMP going while the Batrider gets the LSO to try to guarantee that the Brewmaster doesn't get his ultimate off, but then again, I mean, if the Shadow Demon is around, then that won't be an issue for the Brewmaster anyway. And well, Titan, it's definitely a worthwhile pick, I think, the Invoker. Although a lot of teams do tend to leave it into the second phase, either it's going to get banned out or picked there, and actually Titan, they go for the sanking on net. Invoke not That's a signature hero, but... Yeah, net plays a mean sand king. Uh, always gets some really nice, you know, epicenters, a fast blink dagger, I think, was it last night I saw Titan play? Maybe the night before, but I mean, Net was still rotating around, and he still managed to get up. I think it was an eight-minute blink dagger, which is incredibly, you know, an incredibly fast blink dagger. Um, given that you know he was getting kills, he was helping his team out, and all in all, very impressive. So, I do like that Sankey pickup, but I'm I'm just I'm really surprised that Invoker hasn't been picked or banned because in every single game I've cast in the past, what, two weeks, Invoker has been either a first pick or in the first banning stage. I honestly haven't seen him be let through and. Apparently neither team even care about Invoker. Whatever. I guess like you said, he was nerfed, but still, it's it's very surprising to me. <laughs> yeah, I think it will still get either picked or banned, but it's just left out in the first phase. It wouldn't surprise me at all if either Poker Face or Titan ban it out now. It comes down to if Poker Face wants to run the Brewmaster mid lane or not. And Titan, well... I think the Invoker would be a decent setup for just the Sanking to come in for ganks as well. Start with the Cold Snap, and even though the Cold Snap doesn't do that much damage itself anymore, it would still buy time for the Sanking to actually get close for the Barrel Strike, because on the lower levels, that range is just horrible on that spell. Yeah. Well, it is one of those heroes that needs some levels up, you can't really... It, it can do a bit of ganking early game, but normally, you know, you do want to spend a bit of time in the jungle, making sure you get that Blink Dagger up, and having the fast initiation that you need. Actually, running those two heroes together, the Sanking and the Batrider, I mean, Sanking usually just wants to stack and farm the jungle himself, but if the Batrider is struggling really hard in the offlane, he will just come and take the farm from the jungle himself. <coughs> and that's something that's not the most optimal thing for them to do, but then again, at least the Batrider getting the Blink Tiger early is maybe a little bit more important than the Sanking, because if the Batrider starts setting up kills anyway, the Sanking will get his farm just from the kills and maybe a few towers to follow up. And actually, I would expect Titan to go for some push, although Poker Face did take out both the Shadow Shaman and the Enchantress, so they're well aware how Titan likes to run their lineup recently. Well, uh, the thing about what you were saying about Saiyan King, you know, taking the jungle, but so does Batrider, I think it's something that's very true of Titan, is Ohio normally doesn't rotate out of his lane. Even if he's having a hard lane, I don't honestly know how he does it. I need to sometimes just watch his player perspective, but even if he's having a terrible lane, he's level one at you know the two or three minute mark, he's not really getting any fun or experience. He normally doesn't leave that lane. He just sits there and waits for the lane to either push or you know, if he can go camp a top rune and then get a rotation going or bot nice the radius or top rune and get a rotation to the mid lane going, he'll do it, but he doesn't normally go to the jungle. So I think that's sort of in their plan already, that Net will have, you know, complete control of the jungle and Ohio's just going to be sitting in that offlane. And given that they've got a Shadow Demon, 
unless they do take some sort of a hardcore stunner, like you said, Marana would have been a good not option, but she's been banned out. So, I mean, maybe they're going to pick up the Slark for Febby. That could be something that would help shut down that Batrider in the offlane. But Shadow Demon himself isn't really that helpful against Batrider since, you know, his main escape mechanism is a Firefly. He doesn't have, you know, a leap or anything that you cancel. It's just kind of flying straight over your head. But a Viper pickup. So, do you think aggressive trialing with the Brewmaster or aggressive trialing Shadow Demon plus two more? Or Viper in the tri lane, or what do you think is the best way to lane this combination at the moment? Since Viper and Brewmaster are normally considered mid heroes. Well, that's the beautiful thing about their draft at the moment is that they can switch it around when they actually see what Titans lanes are going to be. I mean, if the Brewmaster would have a tough time, or actually the Brewmaster can stay on pretty much every mid lane against anybody. But sometimes, like the Viper, just can harass enemies more efficiently, so they can swap it around a little bit. But at the moment, I would think that the Viper is probably going to be in the mid lane, but I actually wouldn't mind an aggressive try lane at all with a Viper, Shadow Demon plus one, because that would leave the Sand King to actually not be free to farm and stack the jungle. Yeah, that's true. It would make a lot more pressure for the Sand King. The Razor pickup coming. Uh, I did see KYXY picking up the Razor a couple of nights ago, again in that same match that I forget who they were versing. It was against Myth, Mineski. I don't know. Either way, uh, Razor pickup for Titan. I think that's a quite strong one, especially against heroes like Viper. I mean, that means Viper's damage is purely going to come from that Nether Toxin. And Razor, he's quite, he's quite good against this sort of, I suppose, heroes that don't do lots of nuke damage maybe would be the way to put it. I mean, Brewmaster, Viper, Shadow Demon, they're all kind of long duration team fight heroes. They're not run into a team fight, instantly kill someone and then back out. The team fights that are normally a bit more drawn out and Vi uh, Razor does quite a good job because he can steal a lot of damage in that time period. So I think the Razor pickup is quite nice and a Dazzle again, I mean, I think it's Cynical who plays a really nice Dazzle. Yeah, it's Cynical who plays a Dazzle, but even Dazzle, you know, he's got pretty much nuke damage coming out from his heal, and that's it. The rest of it is just long, drawn out team fights where Razor's gonna have a lot of time to just steal some damage and get the team fight rolling, being able to just one hit everyone. Yeah, I mean, Pokerface, they actually run two really defensive supports at the moment, both the Shadow Demon and the Dazzle, but they work well together aggressively as well because if you disrupt, the illusions actually let your Shadow Wave bounce from them as well, so some extra damage going out there, as well as. The plus armor coming in from Weave definitely will help up against the Eye of the Storm of the Razor, which by the Agony Scepter, maybe Refresher as well, it's going to do a lot of minus armor to you. So that's only a pretty decent and strong pickup overall, and do you actually think the Poker Face oh. might look for some push of their own maybe, or just some more early aggression, because at the moment it sure doesn't look like Poker Face wants to go for the late game, but Titan, well, looks like they won't mind having a Bat Rider, Razor, and now a Tiny as well. That's Late game wise, at tiny. least, yeah. Actually, I would. I've seen tinies recently actually been run more with the blink dagger ganking style of tinies, mm. and that's just so strong, especially against dazzle and shadow demon. Just blink on them, avalanche <laughs> toss, and they can't disrupt. They can't shadow shallow grave or anything. The only worry I have about the tiny is, like you said, shadow demon and dazzle are a pretty defensive combo, but you have to remember really mean combo as well because shadow demon disruption and then you heal them so you kind of run forward and that's a massive amount of damage i mean the heal what does it do at level one it's 80 damage times usually three or four because you can get four heroes surrounding them when well, i guess maybe three because you can only heal three targets unless dazzle's there anyway point is it's a huge physical damage nuke in the early game and if yamata is playing the mid lane tiny it could of course see you know a mid lane razor that is an option as well but tiny his big problem in the early game is low armor and if you're going to have a Dazzle and Shadow Demon roaming around, which it looks like it will be happening because they do have two kind of solo cores with the Brewmaster and the Viper already picked up, that does mean Tiny's going to be taking a lot of harassment in the mid lane with a lot of ganks coming his way. And given he's got low armor, the physical damage coming out from that uh, Shadow Wave, the heal, is going to be doing a lot of damage to him and he could die a couple of times in the mid lane if he's not playing defensive enough. Yeah, that definitely is one of the biggest weaknesses of the Tiny early on. Without the Craig exterior, without any points into it, the base armor is just horrible for him. Yeah. Actually, if... I mean, I guess that's one of the bad things if you're a known team, because if a certain player picks up a hero, you just almost know exactly what the lanes are going to be. Yeah. And if the Tiny is actually going to play mid lane, I would think that Poker Face maybe wants to send a Viper against the Tiny. 
because there's no way Viper should die if he has at least one point in the corrosive skin, should have enough magic resistance already, as well as the Viper should really effectively be able to just box out the tiny from the lane. Well, the thing about the Brewmaster, though, is that he's going to be able to, if he decides to pick it up with a Drunken Haze, and Tiny will have a pretty low ability to last hit, since it, what, it's 45% level 1? Yeah, 45% mischance level 1. So Tiny will have a really hard time last hitting unless he uses his nukes, which isn't really ideal against a Brewmaster. Oh, and there's a Slark pickup as well, and, and Febby normally plays that Slark, so maybe this is an aggressive trialing coming out. Like I was talking about, Shadow Demon Disruption into Slark Pounce, Dazzle Heal, that is an insane amount of damage. I mean, that's going to be enough to pick off whoever the, the support is. And if uh, Razor is going to be the tri lane farmer, with probably, well, it's probably going to be a dual lane because Ned's going to be in the jungle and the Sand King primarily. I think that could be a really nice lane coming out from Poker Face and kind of shut down that Razor because a lot of that damage is not targeted. So his passive, which KYXY actually normally doesn't level up, KYXY normally goes for the max in the plasma field and the static link. So he's not going to have the unstable current anyway to kind of block the damage, well, not block, but, you know, deal return damage on the disruption. And yeah, this is going to be, must be a dual lane mid, KYXY easy lane Razor, possibly. Uh, you. I think KYX at the moment picks up the tiny, but oh, it can still tiny. be dual mid lane. Yeah, and that's interesting. I mean, it was kind of surprising that Poker Face actually didn't pan out the IO once the tiny got picked up, but they were more afraid of the Disruptor stopping the Brewmaster from getting the ultimate, locking down the Slark maybe as well. And the IO, the thing with it is that he's not that strong at all early on, before he gets to relocate, before they start getting the ganks and Titan. They actually do need the levels and... Titan, although they like to play really aggressive early on, they also go for like the semi-greedy kind of lineups. And Poker Face, they just have the perfect lineup to punish that at the moment, I think. Ten seconds remaining. And all. We will see who's gonna pick up what hero now. A little bit in depth as yep. when Yamate will he has the razor and starts with boots of speed as well actually. I think that's a pretty yeah, But it looks like he's gonna be safe lane. Yeah, I'm quite interested in this. I mean, KYXY normally does play the carry. You know, usually, of course, Yamato plays the mid lane. KYXY does sometimes rotate over there, but, you know, normally you do see uh, KYXY playing those sort of farming core heroes, and this game he's going to be on the, the tiny, but going through the players quickly, actually. Um, we're going to be having Yamato, of course, playing that easy lane Razor. Like you said, boots first, no regeneration, so he's going to have to watch out if he's against an aggressive tri lane. And it looks like they might be because they're diving down the bottom lane, and they don't have a courier. <laughs> Cynical didn't buy the courier. <laughs> sitting in his stash there. Uh, Extinct is going to be on that EU in the mid lane with Tiny being played by KYXY. Net is going to be on the Sand King of course in Ohio on the offlane Batrider. Do you want to go through Poker Face? Yeah, for Poker Face on the dark side, Sky will be playing the Shadow Demon with MP on the Brewmaster, Febby to play the Slark, JYU on the Viper and the last one will be Cynical who's just rushing his way to the base <laughs> to get that courier going. Uh, nice miscommunication oh, man. there. Yeah, they've got, they've got two sets of sentries and no wards. Oh, that is a Big miscommunication there. So I guess both of them decided to get sentries and oh well. Who, need, who needs observer wards? New meta. <laughs> They're gonna have four it, up at that seven minute mark. It's mass observer wards oh. everywhere. And to be honest, if they try to just stop the pulling and stacking going from the Sand King, sentry wards are a little bit better because. Well, actually, I guess they're not that much better, but you don't waste the vision part of it at least. Yeah. Uh, I think it really was miscommunication and kind of like pop style. No courier, double sentries. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pop style wouldn't be double sentries. Pop style would just be like everyone gets null talismans or something. But it looks like they maybe want to try and get a first blood attempt. Net is there with boots up at level one as well as that ground bar strike. Yamate, well, he's in the mid lane actually. He's going to be going in for the static link. Stun coming out from Ned. He's stolen. 42 damage already. MP taking a lot of harassment. Are they going to be able to get the kill? One more hit from Yamate will be enough. And down he goes. Ned getting the last hit there for the first blood. So Ohio's going to the easy lane, KYXY is going to be on the off lane here against JYU. And, oh, oh. how did, how did Razor yeah. die? I was... Yeah, the tower actually just right clicked him oh, okay. way too many times and he should have ran the same direction that the Sand King was going together with the IO. He would have been safe then, but... Yeah, that's what I thought he was going to do. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was going to be okay, but apparently he went for <coughs> he's, he's even behind in XP thanks to that because I think the Brewmaster was in XP range when the Razor died. Yeah, I think he TP'd back so to lane straight away. That was kind of misplaced coming out from Titan, but then again, they do grab the first blood, especially as Ned got it as well. 
or it has boots of speed thanks to it. So it's always nice. But the whole bottom lane Hoya gets pwned stuff. They don't have enough lockdown to just keep him in place though. Ohio does have to play very carefully though, because if they get off that initiation with the disruption into the Shadow Wave and the Pounce, it should be enough to kill him at... I mean, it should be enough at level 1, but even at level 2, that is an insane amount of nuke damage, so he does have to watch out for that. Yeah, I think the Battle definitely won't have a good time. I think JYU and the Viper is probably going to get some more farm than the Battle Rider is. Of course, Battle Rider can just rotate into the jungle, which I guess he is looking for at the moment as well. Yeah. Actually, there's a haste rune as well. Nobody's picked it up, but oh, the smoke sky. Can you get the disruption? He's not gonna be fast enough. There's boots already on Battle Rider anyway. But they will get that haste rune, and maybe they want to go for a rotation to mid lane. Yamato's already on half health. He's been giving a lot of grief to MP. The MP just basically using the Thunderclap to get his farm up, and oh, JYU going down on the top lane. Should have been watching for that. Sorry. The, a lot of harassment, a lot of tower damage, I suppose, going into both KYX1 and Net, but Net doing a good job of rotating around. He's got 500 gold in the bank already after that well, second kill in his pocket now. So even though he's not jungling, he probably is going to have up a pretty fast blink dagger if things continue to go this way. Yeah, it's, it's always nice if your ganks work out as well. And if they don't, well, it just sets you back so much, but Net so far has been spot on with the rotations, and actually, looks like Poker Face, they do sentry ward one B camp, so that's not going to get stacked by anybody. And they're on the move as well, and Titan actually they don't have any observers to spot <laughs> these things out. Ooh. But Razor, he actually went into unstable current, and it's actually level 2 now as well. So just completely ignoring the plasma field at the moment. I, f I don't know if that's a particularly good build this game. I mean, MP, he doesn't have any target spells. He's going for the Thunderclap, which is an AoE in the Drunken Brawler, so... I'm not too... Well, he's actually going for stats as well. He's picked up stats at, at level four there, so I don't I don't quite understand this build from MP at the moment. <laughs> but either way, Yamate going for the unstable current. I'm I'm a bit curious about that because what single target spells do they have on Poker Face? I suppose the movement speed is quite nice, but in terms of single target, they've got I guess the poison touch, which normally in Southeast Asia people don't level up. They've got the Ven uh, the Viper Strike. They've got the disruption and the purge, but that's about it. Nothing else is really single target, so. I feel like the nuking damage coming out from the plasma field would be a bit better, but I mean, what do you think? Do you think that it's worth leveling up the unstable current? Well, the only reason I can think of at the moment is that he's expecting MP to actually go for the drunken haze and start spamming that out on the razor so he wouldn't get the last hits. But yeah, oh, no. there's some action! Oh, yeah, it's dropping so damn low. The haste rune is there, and MP <laughs> just going coming with the crit. Although so, Ohio killed off the shadow demon as well. Yeah, shadow demon just running through the firefly there with two stacks of sticky napalm on him. Probably not the best decision, but it's going to be one for one. But Ohio didn't get the experience from that kill there. Oh, I don't think he did, because he was dead already. Yeah, actually we might see a kill mid lane, although MP's Hastron is going to wear out. The gank is coming in, they already used the static link net, gets the burrow circle as well. They should have enough first damage. Brewmaster doesn't have his ultimate, that's actually pretty damn tanky with that level 1 drunken brawler bottling up as well. A nice defensive disruption then. Will there be another burrow strike? Anything as Yamate? Once again under the tower taking a lot of harassment. Ohio is there. Another burrow strike onto Sky, but the Shadow Wave keeps him alive and now MP, Thunderclap up. Actually might go down finding up Shallow Grave. I can't believe they're still alive as net. He's the only casualty so far, although Sky will fall down to Ohio and now MP might be next. Five stacks of sticky nape and he's gonna fall, but Pounce comes in from Baby as well. First rotation spite the Slark, Static Link goes out and he's just gonna have to back off. It's 63 damage stolen by Yamate, so Febby does have to watch his back. You really can't tank too many hits, but 5-3 to three on the board, that was a pretty a pretty aggressive dive, I suppose, coming out from Titan, but they didn't suffer too much for it. And, of course, they managed to take down um, the Panda yet again. So he's sitting just on level 6, but, you know, nowhere near that Blink Dagger, he's just got Bottle and Boots. Of course, the big worry is going to be JYU, who, sitting in the top lane, he's doing pretty well on last years. 25 or 5 minutes isn't bad. Fabi, who did just have that rotation to the mid lane, uh, almost here level 6. He's sitting on top at 29, but you can kind of see KYXY is keeping up, even on farm. Even though he's a melee hero against the uh, Viper, he's still doing pretty well with those last hits. Well, actually, Net decided to go for Tranquil Woods. Battle yeah, has his own as well. I mean, Net, he's just solely focusing on rotating now at the moment. By the looks of it, actually picks up a haste rune as well. Can maybe set up another kill, though. MP, he has his primal split, so I don't think they actually have enough lockdown or burst to bring him down. Yeah, now KYX was rotated down to the bot lane to get a little bit more farm in a, 
in a safer lane, but this does mean the top lanes are pretty much uncontested. Ohio, though, is just continuing to get his farm in the jungle, and like you said, they've used those sentry wards to block the campouts, but the sentry wards are about to die, and, well, it should be easy to stack it next wave anyway. Though, it is interesting that Ohio's kind of abandoned going to a lane, because... You know, normally, like I said, Ohio likes to sit in lane, but I mean, KOXY now wants to get some farm on the easy lane, and I don't really know if Ohio can outlast hit against a Viper. Just given that the Viper's had, you know, complete free farm until this point, apart from that one death, um, you know, Ohio really doesn't stand too much of a chance quite yet against him. He's probably going to need some rotations from Net, and Net's just spending some time in the jungle instead. So. Yeah, I'm not too sure if Titan will be happy with the outcome of letting the Viper free farm at the moment. Because he's most likely going for the mech, or at least I would think so. And if they get the early mech, they're just going to have so much fighting power with the primal split as well, and the viper strike. And of course, Slark, he's level 6 as well at least, so... I mean, poker face, I think they can very soon just start going aggressive and hunting for kill after kill. Well, it's kind of interesting that neither team has actually got a hard carry. Um, both teams have kind of got these, I wouldn't say semi-carries exactly, but early game fighting carries. Like, you know, the Razor, um, who normally goes for the mech pickup and then, you know, I get him Scepter or a BKB just to fight early and Tiny, who can definitely carry in the late game, especially with the Wisp backing him up. But, you know, normally the role of a Tiny is to fight early, push down towers, get pickoffs, and he's going to be doing that. So I'm expecting both teams to start fighting pretty hardcore. One big thing, though, is if you look at the levels, the supports are pretty level starved on both teams. I mean, Wisp, it's eight minutes into the game and he's only level three. And, you know, normally at this point, Ideally, you want to be having a Wisp hit level 6 or so, so you can start getting those rotations going, but looks like it might be happening. Actually, KYXY on the bot lane, getting initiated on, but nice toss and stun onto Febby in Sky. Huge amounts of damage now, Nets rotating in, stun onto Febby. Grave, as well as a disruption, defensive skills all around the shop, and Febby might be able to make it away. He's going to pop his ultimate. Shadow Dance just keeping him alive, though very, very close. But of course, he's just going to be able to pot himself up, run into the bushes and heal himself back up to full. The so KYX by now is going to get Viper struck by the Viper, who's rotated down. JYU is going to be taking a nice three-man stun. Wow, from both KYX by and Net. Sky's going to be able to make it alive, and they will be dropping down Sentry. And now, KYX by another toss back onto Febby, but not going to be enough, because this is a five-man gank coming out from Poker Face, taking down KYX by Extinct. Tether up in four seconds, but there's nowhere really for him to tether to. There's nobody to help him out. He's trying to get close enough to net, but not going to be happening. He's going to be going down there. And I think this is what we were kind of waiting for. The mass rotation's coming out from both teams. Well, not really both teams. I suppose just one. Yamato trying to push the top lane in Ohio. Trying to just farm the top lane to get that blink dagger up. That engagement definitely went in the favor of Poker Face there. Yeah. And they defended the tier 1 tower at the moment as well. It's not in the nigh range though, so Razor probably can get it a little bit later on. And then of course Razor just keeping on the free farm in the mid lane at the same time. He's actually closing in on the mech which will allow them to actually fight a little bit better. Although Poker Face, they still have the primal split that they're ready. So Titan, I mean, like you were saying, the supports are really level hungry. And Extinct, well he's level 4 but just got the level and oh actually MP might go aggressive on net. Never mind, he's going back off. Yeah, just a bit of a, a bit too aggressive possibly. There's three here I said, just him by himself. He does have the primal split but... Not enough, I think, to get a kill. But well, actually, Ohio is only 250 gold away from the Blink Dagger now, all of a sudden, so he's probably gonna have it by like 11 minutes in. Yeah, Which definitely isn't a bad timing. There's a lot of nice dewarding coming out from Poker Face, actually. Using that Slark, I believe, um, is what they're going for, just some maximum ability to be able to figure out where the wards are. And now the towers in mid lane is actually in deny range, so they'll be able to get that deny down, so. Good rotations, I suppose, by the supports there, just ensuring they're keeping the map in their control. Even though they are going to be denying that tower, it is going to be just a, a lot of gold denied there from Titan, I suppose. That's the first tower of the game going down, and it was a deny, so... Nicely done there by Pokerface, and they will smoke up immediately heading down to the bot lane. Just wanting to continue trying and shut down KYXY, but like you said, Ohio does have that, well, 10 minute, I suppose, bleak dagger. He has to go back to base to heal, though, because he's out of mana, but Sky on the bot lane going to be able to get the disruption off on KYXY. Febby, pounce! Gonna be happening, the leash as well, sorry, the uh, Dark Pack just taking him down. Does get a toss stun up, but not enough to kill Sky, and Cynical of course is there with the Grave ready to save anyone he gets too low. So just 5 to 6 on the board, free pick up. On to KYXY. And you were talking about just the burst power of the Poker Face lineup with the Soul Catcher on top, and Soul Catcher is already level 3, so 40% extra damage, and well, the Tiny just got blown up, although he's a relatively tanky hero, especially with power threats and strength and bracers as well. But just not able to stay alive against the burst from Poker Face and well Titan, they have to start reacting fast. Although with the blink tag on Ohio, I guess they can start setting up their own kills. But they need to 
be really good with it. They need that blink their own net as well because at the moment I think they're falling behind at least as far as momentum goes. Actually, Febby, he has 1.9k gold on the Slark. I do think he's also going for a Blink Dagger. I think he will go for a Blink Dagger this game. Shadow Blade is nice, but when you're versing heroes that are quite mobile, I suppose, like the Tiny, the, the um, Sand King, and the Bat Rider, not to mention the Wisp with the Tether, the Blink Dagger isn't going to enable him to just kind of keep up, I suppose, and Shadow Blade doesn't really do that as much um, because people just, you know, will blink to freedom away from you, whereas Shadow Blade's more of a initiate away from towers type item if you know what I mean. Oh, I think it's going to Ohio be the gets the less so. Oh. Net is there as well. Do, do they have enough burst? The toss avalanche is still alive. Mech, he's not finished it up yet, but there's a disruption by Sky. Will it be enough? The soul catcher is actually going on to KYXY. So they should all be safe and that's actually a really important kill because Viper, he was only like 200 gold away from his mech. Although, oh, extinct mid lane, one more right click. Yep. Thunderclap and two right clicks. That's all it took from Buru. And there's the blink tag on Febby as well. So six to seven, it's pretty even in kills at the moment. On uh, top lane, looking like they want to go on cynical. Ned is getting really close to that blink dagger. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes and spends a bit more time getting some farm done, but at the same time, it looks like he wants to just help his team out as much as possible and just stay there for the rotations. Ohio, they're running low on mana yet again, and he could be fire flying to his doom. Febby is there. Febby is no, not going to be able to get the blink dagger off. So he might just go for a pounce. No, he's just going to. Kind of stand there in the sticky napalm, take a whole bunch of damage. <laughs> what is Febby doing? <laughs> He's <laughs> that was just suicidal. Oh man, <laughs> that, that was really <laughs> awkward by him. <laughs> I don't know if that was the low turn rate times, or I guess high turn rate times. I'm not sure. Um, because of the sticky napalm, but he just <laughs> he could have just walked out and been fine. <laughs> oh well, he didn't die. I suppose that's all that matters. So Yamate is still just, just split pushing. He's got that mech up, but who needs to join the team when you can just split push by yourself? Mid lane though, Net can be taking a bit of harassment from Febby there. There is MP as well. Net needs to, well, probably back out reasonably soon, though. I don't think MP is going to go for another storm. Oh, it, oh, the pounce and the leash about to come out, but nope. KYXY and Extinct are there to help out. Just going to nuke him down. MP could be the next target, but KYX is pretty low on mana, even though he did try to int uh, tread switch. Not going to be enough to just uh, nuke to fit, uh, MP at all. And he does have his ultimate too, so. Anything. Actually, it's kind of weird that Extinct didn't go for a portal at all. Of course, they didn't do all mid lane, so I guess it might not have been that effective. But usually, you see yeah. IOs going for portal regardless, I just to get that extra regeneration going. He's he going for a soul actually ring. Actually, has soul ring. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I think he's gonna go for a soul ring because that burst regeneration and um, burst mana is gonna be really good for KYXY. The bottle is also quite nice, and actually they're going on for Sky on the bottle lane. Ohio dragging him up to the high ground there. Yamato trying to get his range, and he is going to be able to just get one huge nuke off there. They're now Max Plasma field doing way too much damage, but Ohio is probably going to die in return. He's stealing Febby's damage, and Febby will use the Shadow Walk, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, Shadow Dance, sorry, but it doesn't really matter because Yamato's stolen all of his damage. 168 positive damage. Febby just... Oh my. <laughs> going to try and last hit, but he does literally no damage. Actually, Dazzle only escaped with 9 HP at the time, I think, from the last right click of Yamate. Yeah. That static link is so strong against the Slark because Slark has to stay up close, and if you got the static link off before the Shadow Dance, like we saw in that fight, you still steal all the damage. And at least Poker Face, they have the mech now finished on JYU's Viper as well. So there's mech on both teams. And I'm actually not too sure who has the stronger fight at the moment. I think Titan might have the edge with the Blink Dagger finished on net as well now. So the big thing is we haven't seen Brewmaster use his ultimate at all, and his ultimate is one of those really early game powerhouses, I suppose, you know, there's not really that much people can do against because they don't have magic immunity and they don't have any real way to kind of DPS down the pandas, I suppose. Looks like now maybe a mid lane is finally going to use it, Slack is going to give it the pounce, so he doesn't even need to, High is just going to fall very, very quickly there. Good little pick off onto him, so 8 to 8 on the board, but I'm still waiting for MP to use his ultimate. <laughs> I'm really just, I'm just waiting for it. And like you said, Ned has got the Blink Dagger up, so it's going to be crucial just to have that magic immunity, I suppose, against the epicenter. But are they ever going to initiate a team fight? Both teams seem to be kind of dancing around the issue, just split pushing, spending a bit of time farming, getting their levels up. And I wonder what exactly they're waiting for. I mean, what do you think they're waiting for? Oh, well, I think Poker Face... There's nothing for them to wait for, to be honest. I mean, they have the blink on the Slark, they have the mech finished on JYU as well. Yeah, he's even level 11 now, so has to level to Viper Strike. So I don't see any huge items coming out soon that would actually help them take the fights. 
and maybe they just are a little bit afraid of the relocate coming in and just stopping the fight or I just think that if they're giving Titan too much time, then Titan would just take advantage of it. Oh, they get the burst like mid as well. There's his entry, the last one AP as well. There's the relocate avalanche. And well, no primal split still. Well, that's, that's the problem though. I mean, you were just saying that they have to watch out because of the relocate, but going alone, that's an ideal situation for a relocate to occur. Like, oh, we're going to be going on to extinct on the top lane as it relocates back. He is just going to go down. Drops pretty much immediately. JYU looking like he wants to die, but there is a rotation coming out from two. Net as well as Ohio coming in. Static Link going to be going off there onto JYU, who's doing no damage. Sky's going to take a fall. Net has already used that stun. JYU now sitting on, well, negative damage. He's not really going anywhere. Mech has already been used, and he throws out the Viper Strike, but it doesn't really matter. KYX by getting to get the last hit. But yeah, I feel like Poker Face are going to have a better time if they do sort of five man. Or, you know, if Slark wants to go split push, I suppose he can, but. You know, the thing about a panda is normally you want to be five manning and getting towers down. You don't really want to be spending a lot of time farming, especially against a tiny. Oh, and then goes Slark getting the initiation off. Well, not even initiation, counter initiation. But MP finally comes in use that ultimate, chasing down after Yamate. Yamate, no mana for mech, no mana at all, in fact. And he's going to be taking a fall there. Same time, though, Febby barely makes it away. Grave saving his life. They're going to be stealing all the damage from Yamate. So Yamate's going to be trying to steal that damage. Not going to be working. And Net is going to be the next target. Panda stun is up in two seconds, but he's going to be despawning before then. Kenny Blink 40 will be able to bring forward, but Net. Well, dodges the slow, but gets hit with the damage. Cynical now is quite low on HP. Extinct is chasing after him. KYX, we're going to come from behind, get the stun toss off. MP could be next. Shadow Demon coming in with the disruption. No, he's going to save the disruption. No, he will disrupt actually onto Batrider. Blink is up on MP in one second. He will be able to blink away from the damage, and it looks like they're going to be able to escape from this. Sky is pretty much the only one in range, and no, he's going to be going down most likely. KYX, so does hit the stun toss as well, and Sky going down, dominating streak there onto KYX. Why? And actually, Febby comes in from behind. He's quite low amount, he has to watch out. No Shadow Dance as well. Though it looks like they're just gonna scratch each other a little bit. KYX we're just gonna TP out. They've got no way to stop it, not enough nuke damage to take him down and he's gonna be okay. I guess Poker Face don't have much stun, do they? That's something else we didn't map uh, mention. It's just Sky to TP, uh, disrupt TP scrolls. It's definitely one big issue for them, especially if they're up against a tanky hero like a tiny one. It's actually 1.7k HP already. Finally has a point into craggy exterior as well. And it's actually only 800 gold away from the Agonist, but oh, there's a relocate going in, they want to go for MP, they know the Primal Split is on cooldown net, just needs the Burrow Strike to come off cooldown and MP, well, he can't escape this for sure, although JYU coming in as well, he actually has Lasso, MP will fall down eventually as Lasso, onto JYU, they use the MP center for it as well, and it's only level 1, but it will probably enough, Viper Strike to come out, but he's gonna burn in the fire anyway, and Febby, does he really want to be here? Avalanche, it's coming off cooldown soon, the toss is there as well, but Extinct keeping it alive, there's the Burrow Strike, and Febby, he's gonna fall as well. That was beautiful, that toss into Epicenter. Net didn't... I mean, I don't even know, that was just beautiful. But Cynical gonna turn around, taking down Extinct. Toss, well, just tossing onto Sky. Cynical now not really going anywhere, and Sky now wants to just 1v3. He is manning up, he is not afraid. Net is gonna stun up in one second. Febby's bought back into the game. Cynical buy back as well, they wanna fight this. KYXY though is gonna be able to make it alive. Febby already uses a dark pack, so no way to debuff, but he has got blink up in three seconds. He just needs to make sure he doesn't take damage. Net is gonna be the one who maybe takes fall, but they don't have any detection. Net is just gonna sit there invisible until the end of time. Cynical, oh no, maybe not, maybe not. He's gonna try and walk away. Does Febby have the ability to pounce? He will hit the pouncer and Net's gonna go down. 18 to 14 on the board, but I I feel like Titan are taking a pretty big lead and Golden Experience tell the same story. But I would say about 10,000 gold lead and Experience is 7,500. Yeah, this exchange, I mean, how long did it actually last? Like three minutes of non-stop fighting almost? <laughs> yeah. uh, that was two buybacks. At one point... Hmm? Oh, was it actually? Yeah, two buybacks oh, man. from Poker Face. So they lost even more because of that, and at some point it was 13 to 12 in the favor of Titan, but they just kept on going, and I think Poker Face they should just should have backed off and let MP die there, but JYU came in, tried to do something, and like I said, the toss epicenter, just beautifully coordinated by Titan, and well, looks like they've got the early game advantage, and to be honest, it's really bad for Poker Face because in mean, Titan they definitely have the better late game here as well. Yeah. So Poker Face, all the pressure is on them now. Poker Face just. They just weren't pressuring when they sh they should have, I feel. When they had up that Blink Dagger and the Mech on the Viper, that was kind of go-go-go time, but they just... Sorry, the Blink Dagger on the, the Panda. Um, but they just spent a whole bunch of time kind of continuing to farm. But now they're ready to go. They are going to be smoking up, but KYX, like you said, Arcanum Scepter is done. And he's building towards that next big item. Do you reckon it's going to be maybe a Yasha or an Assault Curass? What do you think would be better? MKB to dodge the Pandera Brewmaster Drakkard Haze? Not really. 
What do you think is going to be best? Yeah, I think AC is always a decent choice. Just get that extra attack speed going, minus armor to do even more damage to buildings, especially if Yamate is going for an Aghanim Scepter at some point. That would be just so much damage onto buildings. And actually, Yamate has his PKB. They get the Lasso. There's the MP Center coming in as well. They're just going to blow up heavy straight away. And MP, he comes in as well, gets the Prime Speed off just barely though. JYU is in the middle of everything with Yamate with his PKB activated, stealing the damage from the Brulings. As JYU getting kited around a little bit net. Nice force step up to the high ground now. JYU, Mech easy, which there's the heals as well by Cynical. But it's probably going to fall down anyway. Plasma field, the Mech, the Shallow Grave net. Another toss and all. Just a matter of time before he falls now. Just tighten their completely overpowering poker face. <laughs> oh, this is the dive into the tier 4 base. And GG is just going to be called by Febby. They know at this point that they, they don't really have a comeback mechanism. Their heroes are designed to snowball, and poker face just did not snowball the way they needed to. So GG going to be called out at 22 minutes, but. I mean, 21 to 14. I would say that was a pretty exciting game. Yeah, it most certainly was. And poker face, they definitely. Mr. Opening window, to be honest, I think a little bit. Like you said, MP, he just didn't move around, although he went for the fast blink there on the Brewmaster. And I think we saw the Primal split the first time, like, 12, 13 minutes into the game, maybe a little bit later, even. Yeah. Well, GG well played to both teams. It is the best of five, so this is game one going the way of Titan. Thank you, of course, to Gigabyte for sponsoring this tournament, as well as Dota Talk for very kindly allowing me and Capture to cast this. And where can people find you, Capture? Yeah, I'm mostly casting for Hefla TV, so Twitter at slash Hefla TV. So all the info will be there. Yay! Alright, going to the next game right now, guys.